I welcome everybody who is interested in science, and today I wear this nice suit. Wow, can I just say I really like that shirt? Because today I will talk about how one can selectively erase memories from a living organism, which reminds me of a device that guys in Men in Black used in their jobs. Thus, if you want to know more about how this method may potentially be implemented in reality, stay tuned and you will know all the details. Let's go! I feel like citing the movie from 90s makes me feel old. I, I, I probably should work on more recent things, right? The paper was released in one of the most high-ranking scientific journals Science in November 2021 by a group of the researchers affiliated with several prestigious Japanese universities. Now, let's take a closer look on what has been done. The current prevailing views of episodic memory is that it's initially encoded in the brain region named hippocampus, okay, and subsequently transferred to other brain regions, including cerebral cortex, for long-term storage. And this transfer process is named memory consolidation. It has been proposed that the physiological process named synaptic plasticity plays a critical role in the memory consolidation. So if you want to know more about this process, check my other video about top 3 neuroscience papers, where one of the papers addresses the fundamental basis of the synaptic plasticity. It's a pretty cool video, I think. But let's come back to current topic. But for, for this video, it's enough if you consider that um, during synaptic plasticity, the transmission of the signal from a neuron to neuron through a synapse can either be increased, then we talk about long-term potentiation, or decreased, then we refer to long-term depression. I mean, it makes sense. Therefore, it either supports signal propagation or hampers it, either plus or minus. Um, it, it reminds me of um, one uh, cinema scene. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Thus, the process of memory consolidation can roughly be viewed as a balanced combination of long-term potentiation, shortly named LTP, and long-term depression, shortly named LTD, across many thousands of synapses. Perfectly balanced. Pretty, isn't it? Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. In the present uh, paper, scientists developed a method to selectively erase long-term potentiation, LTP. How this can be practically done? Let's consider a simple system of two neurons, which one, uh, where one neuron signals to the other, and take a closer look on what happens in the synapse during LTP. At the figure you can see the neuron sending the signal, colored in blue, and the one receiving it in violet. Circles are vesicles packed with neurotransmitters that serve to transmit the signal and the viral blocks are receptors to which neurotransmitters bind to send the signal. Makes sense, right? Another important structure of the postsynaptic site is so-called actin, the protein that maintains the structure of the postsynaptic site. Importantly, this structure is not rigid, not stable. During LTP it increases, corroborating the signal transmission, and in case of LTD it, uh, the corresponding volume decreases, uh, hindering the propagation of the signal. Now, let's assume that we have learned something and consequently will have an enlarged postsynaptic volume at some synapse. And some volumes at some synapses it will be decreased. But let's focus on the synapses where it increased. As we discussed, all these changes are dynamic. Therefore, we need an agent to stabilize this new shape. And this agent is named cofilin. In a nutshell, when present in a high concentration, cofilin stabilizes these newly formed structures and in this diagram it was presented as these green circles. Then researchers decided, aha, let's temporarily deactivate this key protein. Then what will happen? This enlarged postsynaptic site that kind of stores your experience or memories will not be stabilized anymore and returns to its original size. However, we cannot just delete this protein permanently, because then an organism will not just lose recent memories, but will not be able to form the new ones. And we don't want it. We need to just deactivate it temporarily. And then, after memories are gone, bring, it, uh, bring uh, this normal functioning back. Like in Men in Black, after people uh, received this, light, uh, this flash of light, uh, they could do all daily life activities without any problems. Question is, who are you? I'm the postmaster of Truro, Massachusetts, and I'm ordering you to leave these premises. To accomplish this highly ambitious goal, researchers injected a specific adenosine associated virus into the brain, and no worries, those are not the viruses like COVID and are completely harmless. Uh, they only work as a, as, a, as a courier to code the expression of a specific agent in a target cell. When optical stimulation is then applied, this agent releases oxygen, which consequently deactivates cofilin. When the light is switched off, the normal functioning is restored, but the enlargement of the synapse is gone. Thus, the memory is gone too, but only the recent specific ones. And again, similar to Men in Black, the witnesses forgot only the recent alien reality events 
and this effect is caused by a rapid flash of light. Therefore, combining all these pieces together, you induce the expression of a light sensitive agent. By illuminating the target area with a specific light, you activate this agent. Agent inhibits co filling and destabilizes the enlarged postsynaptic site, and postsynaptic site relaxes back to its baseline, and therefore the learned information is gone. You can never take away all man's memories. This paper is a beautiful demonstration of how you can combine state-of-the-art bioengineering techniques with the fundamental neuroscience knowledge to get a highly specific desired effect. Moreover, this tool allows researchers to erase formed memories at different time points after the animal learned a novel information. Apparently, the formation of the memory consisted of three critical waves. The first wave acts locally in the hippocampus, roughly within 30, the first 30 minutes after the learning process. It seems to be like um, a first a uh, rough draft of what has been learned. The second wave appears during the sleep, on the same day, organizing the neurons into uh, synchron synchronously firing ensembles, kind of a um, pre-final version to be stored. And finally, the third wave occurs in the cortex during sleep on the second day and is required for the stabilization and the storage of the memory. So now your memory is kind of sent to the archive. And, as was shown by the experimenters, uh, long-term potentiations plays a vital role in the memory consolidation process, which links these three stages together. Who knows, taking into account that optogenetics is already applied in humans, and we need to learn a um, huge amount of information every day, maybe we may use such techniques and reveal mechanisms not to erase, but to enhance memory consolidation and increase learning. Or maybe someone can use such things to make us forget something. I am just a figment of your imagination. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumb up and do not hesitate to leave your comments, impressions or just emotions in the comment section below. As usual, every comment will receive a response. Every piece of information is important and does help to improve the channel. This is for today and I hope to see you soon.